Hello, doctors. I'm your host, Chip Fitchner, co-founder of Large Practice Sales, and you're listening to Practice Partnership, Monetizing Your Dental Practice. This is the podcast where I teach you how to build long-term wealth by partnering with an invisible dental support organization and continuing as an owner and leader of your practice for years or decades, all while retaining full autonomy in your dental practice. In this episode, I want to talk to you about the key differences between an invisible DSO and a dental support organization that you may be familiar with for the last few decades. It's something that every doctor of every age across the country should fully understand. Let's get into my conversation with producer Gabe. So Chip, can you start by telling us about the key differences between a DSO and an IDSO? The invisible DSO concept uh, is not particularly new. It's been around for over 30 years. And an invisible DSO differs from a traditional, as we call it, branded dental support organization in a number of significant ways. The branded DSOs have built their businesses by acquiring 100% of various practices And in a typical DSO transaction, the doctor is seeking a retirement or transition or exit strategy and will typically sell 100% of their practice to the DSO for cash up front and then will continue to work for the practice as the doctor for one, two, or three years after closing of the transaction. So historically, uh, the DSOs have have grown by buying 100% of a practice with doctors heading for the end of their careers. The invisible DSO model is very different. The invisible DSOs, in essence, will come in and be a silent partner and provide the resources of a bigger group like a DSO, but yet to doctors who remain independent and autonomous. And the way the invisible DSOs structure these transactions is they'll come in and buy anywhere from 51 to 90% of a practice for cash up front. The doctor will retain ownership in the balance and continue to lead the practice under the doctor's brand, team, and strategy. The Invisible DSO's goal is to provide that doctor resources to help them grow bigger, better, faster, and more profitably with fewer administrative headaches. So the Invisible DSO, while they're not going to manage the practice for the doctor, they're not going to homogenize it. They will, however, take over banking, accounting, payroll, benefits, tax, legal, compliance, credentialing, and vendor and payer negotiation. And each of them is different. Some of them have resources that can be great recruiting assets. They're not going to tell the doctor who to hire, but the doctor may say, gee, I really could use two more hygienists. Can you help me find them? And some of these groups have very large internal recruiting departments. One, for example, that operates in about 30 states, uh, has 27 people full-time in their recruiting department, and they do nothing but find uh, great team members for their partner doctors. Any other key differences between a DSO and an IDSO that you want to share? Some of the other differences between a DSO and an invisible DSO is the invisible DSOs will generally bring much higher values to their partner clients or achieve higher values because they're not just buying a business, they're buying that doctor and the team to continue to be a part of that practice for years or decades, which is why we've seen a dramatic shift in the attraction of younger doctors to an invisible DSO partnership. As an example, last year, we did $612 million of invisible DSO partnerships for doctors in 29 states with dozens of invisible DSOs. And out of that 612 million, 102 million of those transactions were for doctors in their 30s. When you're a doctor in your 30s, you may be eager to offload some of the administrative minutia and potentially see the value of that retained ownership increase dramatically more than if they had retained, remained independent. It's not unusual for doctors to see returns on that equity portion that they retained as an owner grow by two, three, five, 10, and sometimes 20 times over periods of three, five, and 10 years. And each one of the invisible DSOs is going to have different upside opportunities, but it really is an opportunity for doctors to not just make a high level of ordinary income, but also to potentially create generational wealth over time 
at long-term capital gains tax rates, which obviously are much lower. That makes sense. In the past, doctors only considered a DSO or an IDSO relationship as a transition or retirement tool. Is that still true today? Historically, uh, DSOs were an exit opportunity for doctors looking at the end of their careers. And you can use the word exit or retirement or transition, but generally the DSOs, the branded DSOs, uh, were, were partnering with doctors at the end of their careers. The invisible DSOs, however, are more interested in younger doctors in which they can create long-term multi-decade partnerships. It is not a retirement or exit strategy. It's an opportunity for younger doctors to reduce their administrative burdens, grow bigger, better, faster, have a better work-life balance, and ultimately participate in significant upside gains on that equity portion or ownership that they retained either directly in their practice or at the parent company. Right, right. Moving on, what's been the impact of the current financial market turmoil and higher interest rates on practice values? Logically, and the perception of doctors that I talk to every day is that values should be declining uh, due to interest rates, inflation, bank crashes, et cetera. But the reality is far different from the perception. We're achieving higher values for our doctors in 2023 than we did in 2022, which is a record year. But more telling is the number of bidders that we're getting for our clients. Uh, As a general rule, we won't accept a client unless we know of at least six qualified bidders. And that's how we drive up values. Multiple bidders not only drives up value, but gives the doctors multiple options in their prospective partners. We had two transactions last month where one of the doctors had 18 qualified bidders and another one in the same town had 13 qualified bidders. So the actual number of bidders has been going up, which coincidentally has been driving up values to new records. I think over the next three, six, 12 months, we're going to continue to see growth in the number of bidders and and continuation of the extraordinary high values with great potential partners. When a doctor partners with an IDSO, what operational changes should they expect in their practice? One of the great things about an invisible DSO uh, and in our process is that the doctors will fully understand long before they get engaged, much less married, exactly what will and will not change in their new IDSO partnership. Now, the way we do that is certainly by encouraging the doctors during the process to ask the various prospective bidders uh, what uh, changes will happen, and the prospective bidders will tell them. In our process, we're going to introduce doctors to other doctors that have done transactions with the groups that they are considering as finalists so that they can have a doctor-to-doctor conversation and ask those questions of the doctor, their peer, And what they experienced. Hey, what changed? What didn't change? Are you glad you did it? Would you do it again? Did they do what they said they would do? And we think that's an important part of the function that we perform uh, in the process because we want our doctors to be extraordinarily happy after they complete a transaction, not just because their bank account is fatter, but because they're getting the services and the benefits from that partnership that they were sold on. Doctors uh, who join invisible DSOs are generally extremely happy because their administrative burdens have been reduced. No one has told them who to hire, who to fire, or how to do dentistry. Uh, These groups are very hands-off, but it's a collaborative relationship. It's not a command and control. Mm -hmm. Great. What determines the initial value of a practice in an IDSO partnership, and what are the longer-term value aspects of partnership? And can you explain the dental trifecta? The initial values of practices today are based on a relatively complex set of factors. Certainly the operating profitability or EBITDA of the practice uh, is relevant, uh, but it's not the only factor. Um, There can be other things that drive value, including the doctor's age, the doctor's location, the doctor's growth rate, and the prospective growth opportunities for that practice within the community, whether that's via expansion of the existing practice uh, volume, uh, better utilizing their existing capacity, or it may be through synergies with other practices uh, that the group that they're partnering with might be partnering with in the same community. And we see that a lot in what we call a dental trifecta. 
a dental trifecta uh, is where a group focuses on only partnering with pedos, orthos, and oral surgeons in the same community. And when they're able to do that, uh, you see increases in not only initial values, uh, but also in long-term profitability opportunities on the equity for the doctor because you have a, a referral ecosystem where the pediatric practices within the group refer to the orthodontic practices for braces, and both the pediatric and the orthodontic practices refer to the oral surgeons in the group in the community uh, for various procedures, especially including wisdom teeth. And so you're able to create an ecosystem that drives internal growth without marketing dollar expenditures. And therefore, you're creating not only higher initial values for those three types of practices, but you're also creating long-term economic values. One of the first uh, dental trifecta groups that we helped form and to which we sold 110 practices in 35 months, uh, recapitalized in September of 22 at an extraordinary record value because of the internal growth that they had generated due to the referral patterns. Right on. How does an IDSO help doctors with recruiting and retaining? So one of the primary challenges facing dentists of all types today is recruiting. The invisible DSOs have certain levers that they can pull in recruiting that independent practices don't have. As an example, uh, all of these groups will create a path to ownership for not only current associates, but also future recruited associates. Because you want to get associates that are great, and to keep them, you need to give them a path to ownership and equity upside. And all of the invisible DSOs um, are going to create that path, thus keep uh, to their their bedrock philosophy, which is we want owner doctors operating our practices. And so when the initial, let's call it selling doctor, retires by giving a path to ownership for existing and future associates, they're now going to have a continuity of owner doctors operating their practices. Where we see this as most significant recently is in oral surgery. Oral surgery today is the fastest consolidating of all of the dental practice types, primarily because oral surgeons are having real challenges in recruiting. As an example, uh, last year there were 220 residents that graduated from the oral surgery residencies of which over half went to uh, invisible DSOs or DSOs. So an independent oral surgeon out there whose life's goal was to build a practice, recruit a re an associate who would ultimately buy him out, that model is no longer feasible. Uh, and it's especially no longer feasible in larger practices because uh, the kids coming out of school have a massive amount of debt and don't have the ability or desire to go borrow the money to buy out the practice from the selling doctor. So we're seeing in oral surgery groups that can solve the recruiting problem, having their pick of partners who are eager to join an invisible DSO, if for nothing else than to resolve their recruiting issues. We did two transactions last year for oral surgeons, both of them valued over $50 million. And the primary driver of those transactions were the doctors had not been able to recruit other oral surgeons to expand their practices. So they were growth constrained due to recruiting issues. Both of those practices added two new oral surgeons uh, within 90 days of completing it. Is there a certain size a practice needs to be to qualify for an IDSO partnership? Practices that qualify to achieve high value transactions with an invisible DSO will have typically at least an operating profit of about $500,000 in EBITDA after doctor compensation. And that usually translates into specialists that have at least a million and a half dollars in collections and GP practices that have at least a million eight hundred thousand dollars in collections. What should doctors appreciate about the coming IDSO wave, as you call it? Every doctor should fully understand the coming invisible DSO wave. Uh, they are probably in your community today. You don't know that because they don't rebrand their practices. As I like to say to doctors with larger practices, you will either join an invisible DSO or compete with many. And these folks can be very fierce competitors. So an invisible DSO can be your friend if you join one. They can also be your foe if you don't. Right. So why are you so passionate about this, Chip? What gets you out of bed every day? 
The great thing about my job is I have the opportunity to help doctors diversify their investment portfolio. For many doctors, uh, their practice is their largest single asset, and it can be difficult to monetize that as a high value without professional help. Uh, These are complex, life-changing, once-in-a-lifetime transactions, and doctors deserve to have a quality advisor who has no conflicts of interest. Many of the advisors in the industry or paid by both the buyer and the seller, both the doctor and the invisible DSO. In our business model, we set it up originally and intentionally to only represent and therefore only get paid by doctors so we have their best interests at heart always. And and knowing that we do a great job for our doctors in giving them options is very fulfilling for me personally. Thanks for sharing your thoughts this episode, Chip. So what's coming up on the next episode of Practice Partnership? We believe that doctors should consider all of their qualified options in any process of choosing an invisible DSO partner. And in our next episode, we'll be talking about what elements are important in that choice and structural elements that are most advantageous to you, not only from a value and an equity upside standpoint, but in a tax rationalization or tax optimization structure. So in our next episode, we'll go into more detail about how to create the most a tax optimized structure and the highest value transactions for the doctor. Thanks for listening to Practice Partnership, Monetizing Your Dental Practice, a podcast from Large Practice Sales. Large Practice Sales is the largest advisor to GPs and specialists of all kinds seeking to monetize all or part of their practice. The key for doctors to maximize your practice value is choosing the right advisor and the right IDSO partner. At LPS, we guide our clients towards partnerships with IDSOs that not only reduce administrative headaches, but give you the resources to grow your practice bigger, better, faster, and more profitably. And best of all, with the right IDSO partner, you can create generational wealth. If you're interested in learning the potential value of your practice in an IDSO partnership, visit our website at largepracticesales.com. Or you can email us at podcast at largepracticesales.com. Follow this podcast for more tips you won't find anywhere else on how to monetize your dental practice at the maximum value. Learn from LPS, which completed over 600 million in IDSO partnerships in 2022.